morning people morning 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 hope all is well hope you guys are having a good time um hope you're keeping safe hope you're not in quarantine i mean <laughs> hope you're quarantining whichever way you pronounce it i hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's um interview we've got another one today i hope you guys um look forward to it hope you guys enjoy it uh we're about to kick it off just waiting for yo he's there now I can just see he's just joined, so he sent a request and we'll be good to go. Just waiting for the connection. Yo, what's going on, bro? Yes, my brother, what one? Not too bad. For a minute there, I got a bit scared because the background, them cream walls look like it was back in jail. I know, I, seen the I mirror. know, I know. <laughs> I was getting a bit worried. I'm like, where, where, where's he going to? How are you doing? Nah, nah, you get me. Dad, you know, it's just how they paint. Nah, I hear that. You good, though? Oh, reception. Bear with us, people. Bear with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the reception is uh, cutting out a bit there. But yeah, how are you this morning? You good, though, yeah? I'm good, brother. How are you? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. So let's, let, 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 let's, let's kick it off. Let's kick it off. So um, I, myself, wasn't too familiar with you because obviously I'm an older generation and also... Yeah, um, yeah. You're probably my younger brother's generation. He actually told me that he used to play at Athenley with you. Um, yeah, and yeah, you went to yeah, a school yeah. as well. Yeah, so, I was um, little bro, man. Yeah, so let's start from the very start then. What's your background? Uh, where are you from? Your parents and so on. Yeah, dad. I lived in Camberwell for probably since I was like 10, but I grew up in Peckham, you get me? Okay. Yeah, like near enough every estate in Peckham I grew up on, bro. So, uh, 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 how is your, um, what do you call it, family, where they're from? Uh, my family, my, my dad's from Jamaica, my mom's from Guyana. Okay, okay, so from the Caribbean. Have yeah, you ever gone back Caribbean. there? Yeah, yeah, I went to school out in Jamaica, man. When I was young, in like, I think I was in year seven, year eight, I went over there and I went to school for about nine months. Oh, what, what, was you, was you getting in trouble or something? Or yeah, they sent you over yeah, there? when I was young, like your brother would tell you, man, in school, mm. I, like, I was misbehaving a lot. Like, at a young age, it was just mad. I don't know what happened, man. I started misbehaving young. And then my mum said, yo, it's better that you take a little break. Maybe go back home, see how it is out there. I went out mm. there. But it was kind of like the same thing, innit? It's a so was, you, was you living with both parents or just your mum at the time? And with nah, dad and my, my, my dad at the time then was inside, innit? He was locked okay. up then. So I was mm. living with my mum, you get me? And how was that for you growing up? Because... Well, as I've been doing these interviews, there is there has been kind of a common theme with everyone that I've done is that dad wasn't kind of read around. Do you think that played a part in terms of the discipline? Nah, 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 nah. Cause my mum was dad, mum, sister, everything. You get me? Mm. Like, my mum pattern. There mm. weren't no... That like, man didn't notice if that makes sense. You get me? Yeah. Like, he weren't there, but he was there, innit? Because my mum mm. had, man. There weren't nothing mm. that I went without. I had clothes, food in my fridge, everything in my room. You get me? Mm. So... so when you went back to Jamaica, how was that living there, the transition? Because year seven, year eight, did you want to go? Were you thinking, Mum, what's nah, going on? No, 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 I weren't trying to go. Like, we went out there on, like, a holiday thing, and then my mum just broke the news to me, like, yo, you're not, you're not coming back, in it? You're chilling oh, there for Oh, one of those ones. <laughs> yeah, you get me, but it was a thing where I knew, mm. I, was, I knew I was acting up in school, you feel me? But mm. at the same time, I didn't think, yeah, my mum's going to leave me out there. But she said, yo, boom, you're here. You're going to come back, in it. But you need to fix up. You need to fix your behaviour. And, and did you have siblings as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. I just got straight sisters, though, innit? All big sisters. Oh, oh so you're the youngest? Yeah, I'm the youngest. I'm the only boy, innit? Okay, so it, not mum's favourite, but kind of there's a more of a soft touch with the youngest and you're the boy as well, I guess. Yeah, with all of them, though. Not just my mum. All my sisters are like that, innit? I like mm. their baby, innit? You get mm. me? So, in terms of what you're saying, you were misbehaving, was it sort of disruptive, like talking back to teachers, was you getting into fights in school? Everything. I went to an all-boys school, innit? Mm. So, we didn't really have much to do but play football, fight, pound up. Mm. You get me? So, in, 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 in regards to academically then, was you one of the guys in the top set? Was you intermediate? Was yeah, you no, I was in the top set. But my mm. behaviour is what got me dropped down, innit? Mm. That's what, like, I was acting up. They're saying, like, you don't deserve to be in these sort of classes, innit? So yeah. they dropped me down. But I didn't care at that time because it's like all, all my brethren are in the classes below, man. Mm. Mm. So now you've just put me with my brethren sort of thing, innit? 
Yeah. So when you come yeah. back then, you went to... Um, so you, you done a year, no, nine months out there, you said? Nine months, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you came back, you, you came to year, year nine, year eight, year yeah. nine? Yeah, came back, came back to year nine. When I came year back, nine. I was in year nine, went back to St. Thomas Apostle, you get me? Oh, so you was already in St. Thomas, so they agreed to give yeah. you that time off as well? They agreed, yeah. It's like them and my mum made some backdoor deal or something, I don't know. <laughs> but they said, yeah, boom, when he comes back, if his behaviour improves, he can stay. But then I was there, I think, until about... The beginning of year ten, mm. and then I got expelled from school. Then that was when they you, said, "Nah, it's enough." You you got expelled. What 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 was the reason for you getting expelled? Uh, that time, now nah, bad it is that time there is because we were smoking in school. Okay, okay. That's and, what happened. In, and we to smoking. I'm assuming weed, and I'm assuming like how how because. But me, everyone around me smoked, but I had that willpower. I just wasn't into it. I was so much into my football. Was it a thing that where someone said, yo, all that, you just started smoking as well? Nah, do you know where it is? To be honest with you, I started smoking properly when I went to Jamaica. Oh, makes sense. It makes this sense. Saying, when I went to Jamaica, it's like, what man was buying out here for £10 that I got to go five ways with my bedroom for? Man's going to Jamaica mm. and getting for $20. That's 20 mm. beans to man at them times there. Mm. So now I'm smoking properly every day before school, in school, we're bunking, like, do you get it? And then when I come back now, it's like I can smoke, but I can't build up. Mm. So, so then you, you school, learn. We, yeah, I learned, like, one of my brethren, me and him are the same age, yeah, my, 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 one of my best friends as well, he taught me how to build it in school, innit? Mm. Do you get it? So we built it, and then it's like... We're supposed to wait until a certain time to smoke with them, man. But it's like me and my other brethren are saying, fuck that, we're going to smoke now. We've gone, mm. smoked, try and go back to class, and they just got bad cover in there, high off our faces, isn't it, man? How, how, how did you think that what it done for you mentally? Did you think it ever affected you, smoking? Because some people say, you know what, smoke has always been nice for me. It's, never, it's, it's a past time that I like to do, I like to enjoy. But some people turn around and say, you know what, in the long term, you know what, it didn't make me focus as much. What would you say to that? No, I'll be honest, for me, smoking ain't really done. It might just be that I'm so used to it now, isn't it? Mm. That it's just been part of my life for so long. But for me, I'm active same way when I'm smoking, mm. especially so, with the music. Yeah, so you, you, you came up, I guess, in the era of PYGs. So yeah, definitely. Was, was, was you a member of PYG at the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So how did that, that come about? Because I, I, I left Peckham... 2003, I'm 17, and my younger brother would have been 12 at the time. So you'd have been, you'd have been 12 at the time as well. So I'm no, back Jar, he's in the year above me, so I'd have been 11. Oh, Joe, okay, he's a, yeah, so he's in the year above you. So I've gone, and I'm, I'm hearing PYGs, PYGs. How do you remember being involved in that, or even how it started? How it started was just, we all used to chew each, with each other, in it. Like before us, there was bare man, like. GAT, uh, who else was there? That because GAT all them, was all, uh, all Nana and them that they live around the corner. Yeah, from me. you get me, Bonds, D man, them mm. man there. You get me, there was a bag of them from like all the ones that was above, like Jarvis and that. You know me, yeah? yeah. And then for us, like, it was just we all, all of them that made me live in Peckham, innit? Like mm. North Peckham and that, innit? But then there's man like me, a couple of my brothers are from Southampton Way, from Glebe Estate mm. and that. So us man are all in Peckham now as well, innit? And mm. it's like, we just said, yo, boom, we need to have our own thing, innit? Mm. It's like do you, you, do you know who actually came up with the name PYGs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like four of us texting each other at night, bruv. Me, mm. me, Young Butch, Shocks, and who else? Jim, Jimmy, mm. and I think Boost. And there was like five of us, and we're texting each other different names, like, yo, what are we going to call ourselves? We're going to mm. call ourselves this, Young Gunners, that, da, da, da. And then it's like, one of us have just said, yeah, Young Gunners. And then we just put the Beckham in front of it. And then after mm. that, we just started coming up with bare different names. Like, what PYG could mean, you feel me? Mm. So, at that time, you guys were re renowned. Like, everywhere I was going, a PYG. And this is, the, I guess, the, before the time of social media, it's more the YouTube thing. Like, your your videos were going off. You guys were quite notorious. How did you feel about that time? Like, raw, like we're, we're well known across the whole UK. Yeah, no. When we're young, we're gassed, innit? Cause it's like mm. we're in our eyes, we're bringing back our hood, innit? Like everyone knows about Peckham now because of us, innit? Mm. You get it? Like 
there's older man that rap and that fam, but when it comes to the the, the street side of the thing, it's like it's PYG you're gonna hear about in it fam. And mm. I think it's more of a thing of where we were so young. Cause you have to remember them times there, man was 14, 15, 16, mm. you understand? Mm. And our names are singing bells. And that's funny because that we, we, we always look at things and say, oh, people involved or active in gangs, how old are they? And it doesn't sort of change because I remember we were in year 10 and we were the YYPBs and then the ones in who were 13, year 8 were the Peckham kids. So it's so crazy how that transition. What do you think then happens? Do you think that the olders are, are passing on generational to the youngers and then it just follows through? Because as people get older, they change. What, what do you think about that age specifically that sort of makes people attracted to that lifestyle? I think it's more like where you grow up, in it? Like where mm. we grew up in Peckham, when you're young, yeah, you're going to be, you're going to be tested a lot, innit? Mm. You know, like that, like, it's just going to happen, innit? If a man grew up in the era of happy slapping and that, bro, so you didn't mm. even have to do nothing to get boxed in your mouth, you see what I'm saying? Mm. So it's better that you got your brethren around you, fam, and it's like a unity thing, innit? That's what mm. it is. I don't think it's got nothing to do with the orders or nothing. It's like we was all like a family them time there. It's not yeah. like them man are trying to force badness on man or nothing like that. Mm. It's just natural what we do around here, innit, fam, you feel mm. me? And it, I don't know, man. It might be safety, and it's love as well, man. Like man had love for all the man in them at that, at that point, mm. innit? Cause like what they will do for me, I will do for them. Every single one of them, you feel me? Mm. And it's like so, that. Just, I think that made us ring even more bells, bro. Cause they know when you see one of us, you're gonna see like thirty. You feel me? Mm. So at that point as well, you you was going by the name of Younger Killer Kai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Was it thing like because I've done a few interviews? People say, you know what? I just took the name, man. I, I didn't wait for someone to give me. I liked what my man was on, and I just took the name. How was it for you? Nah, nah, nah. Like, obviously, I don't know, man. You just get back then, man. We calling it recruited, innit? it? Like the man I'm mm. gonna recruit you and whatnot. But that sounds kind of mad. But it's like, yeah, my man just had a mad love for me. You feel me? Killer mm. had mad love for me. He used to show my mad love when man was young. You feel me? Mm. So it's like he just told man, yo, boom, like, and just. Kind of took man under his wing and said, Yo, boom, your man's young, do you get me? And mm. then that just boosted man even more. Mm. You know and me? with that, did you, did you feel any pressure? Because obviously, Killer Kai is well known. So, did you yeah. feel that like, I have to kind of, to be younger, it's, it's a place of prestige. So, I need to kind of like jump on this thing a bit more. Nah, man, that's why he picked me in it. Cause I'm already doing it. already I'm doing okay, food, okay. Yeah. So he looked so at man and said, yo, boom, my man, in it, car. He's, mm. I'm doing whatever, you feel me? Mm. So in regards to, I guess, music at the time, because at that point, I know um, the, 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 they had that song, uh, Peckham Young Gunners, um, which Joe, it had, I think it had Young Lap, Boost, and I can't remember. Yeah, who you guy. talking to, yeah. Yeah, who you talking to? At that point, was everyone in the crew doing music or just specific certain people? I know Shocks at the time was doing music, Sticks was doing music at the time. Was it sort of thing that where everyone in the click was doing music? Nah, not all of us. A lot, couple of us was rapping them, but at that time, them man that are on that tune, them man was the hardest. Mm. You feel me? Like shocks at that age, no one's not chatting for shocks. You get mm. it? And then boost, and then tiny darks as well. You get me? Them three mm. there was the hardest. Out at that age, there they was definitely the hardest, isn't it? Mm. So it's like them man got chosen to be on that tune, and then everyone else was just gas. Like yo, we got some members on a tune. Mm. You get me? The video was in yellow brick, like. Everyone was just gassed about it, you get me? And when that and video came out, about. it went viral. How was you guys think at the time? Like, that's us, we're, 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 ne we're up next. Yeah, that just boosted everyone. Like, yo, we need to start making our own videos now, you get me? Mm. And in, in that in that era, then, uh, did you just start writing your own lyrics and thinking, I'm going to, then, how did it work? Did you start going to studio? Yeah, before that, though, I remember um, the GAT, they took our studio one time, innit? But them times, mm. grime, innit? Like, everyone mm. MCing, innit? And they just took us one time, like, yo, all of you lot jump in the booth, innit? There was probably about eight of us, bro. Mm. And everyone just went in there, spat their little eight bars and that. So from then, and we was probably about 14 then, so from then, mm. mum was writing bars, innit? But it's like, at that age, a lot of it, you're probably chatting shit, and a lot of it, you're, you're talking the truth, innit? But mm. and plus, we weren't really that good, innit? Mm. That's so cool. as 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 things trans transpire, you're you're part of this uh, crew now, and I'm assuming you're having beats with other areas. Was there any point there where you felt your life was ever in danger at that time? Because I know that the thing with Brixton was really hard at that time. It was really active mm -hmm. with Brixton at that time. Was there any point there where you felt 
your life was in was in trouble because I remember we used to actually sometimes when you think about it, we actually used to go to other people's areas looking for trouble. Yeah. What, yeah, what happened yeah, for yeah. you guys? For me, anyway, my road where I lived in Campbell, I lived behind Sacred Heart. Like my road was like two roads away from Mitesfield. You feel me? Mm. So every day, man's just on point. I don't. I can't say that I was in fear of my life. At the same time, it's normal to man them times. Then mm. like every day we leave. If we don't have a madness in Brixton, we have one in Campbell with some random you you get it, cause like mm. so every day it was just normal, innit? Like I wasn't fearing for my life or nothing. Like, I just knew like, yo, I have to protect myself, innit? Mm. So in regards to sort of financial was the thing that where people are starting to say, Oh, you know what? Let's start making money. Cause a lot of time when I see young people, it's about they're they they're, they're, they're being gang members or whatever, but they just kinda keep up with silliness, like, oh, let's go and fight this group. But they're not thinking about money at the time. Was it the time where money was a motivation for you or just about strictly about having that reputation? It was both, innit? Like, me from young, I knew, yeah, I need peas, innit? I need peas mm. to get everything that I want. I don't like going home and saying to my mum, yo, mum, I want these trainers or these mm. tracksuits and my mum's going to have to go in her pocket and get it for me, innit? I know my mum's working hard them times, innit? Like I said, my mm. dad's in jail, you feel me? Mm. So, man saying, yo, when I want something... I'm going to trap for it. And before that, like I said, I'm playing pound up. Mm. I'm playing dice. I'm doing anything. I'm in school robbing man's cookies and then shutting them. Like, bro, mm. whatever it is, I need to start stacking, innit, fam? So if mm. whatever it is, I stack £2.50 a day or £50 a day. From young, I knew, yeah, I need to make peas. And most of the man that was around me was on the same thing, innit? But it's mm. not like we was making any major money, but we all yeah. knew, yeah, we need to do something to have our own money around us, innit? So I guess... When 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 you're doing this, are you did you, did you think about obviously you got kicked out of school? Was that done? Were you done with education then? You didn't try to go to college, apply and get nah. back into it. When I uh, when I got kicked out of school, my mum got me homeschooled for a bit, but that mm. just weren't working. Like I didn't enjoy it at all. Like I, I went on it, and then after that, I went to some fucking all black school in Brixton, in the middle mm. of Brixton. I went there like probably seven eight times, and I said, "This is long. Every day I leave here, I'm gonna see someone." So mm. I stopped that, and then after that, they got me into college. I think I was mm. like, yeah, 10 them times there. I went to um, Waterloo College okay, for about six months. And then after that, I left there. And then from there, I was done with education, man. Was, was, was there anything that you was... I know you played football, but was there anything that you felt that when you was young that you really wanted to be? I can't say I did. Like, football was an avenue at one point, in it. But to be mm. honest, the, man weren't the best at football. I can play football, but... I was never the guy like, yo, Siege is cold at football. Do you get it? Mm. Who, so, was, who, was, who, who was the coldest at football at that, at that, at that point in your era, would you say? Yo, Bearman could kick ball when I was young, you know. You see, uh, Paulie, Tiny Glam, he's bad. Yeah. Tiny Major. What? Tiny Major, he's bad. Uh, who else? There was one, you, Sampson. The next you, Daniel, he's got dreads. He all plays professional now. There was, that man was dope. Mm. There was a couple, man. Even CS, CS is dope at football. That's what that's, that's that's what he told me. CS told me he's dope, bro. <laughs> no, nah, CS is dope. Still. Big man, thing like I don't I don't know. He's proper cold still. But, mm. but there's a bag of man that could play football. All them younger JT, your brother, all his brethren, all of them are bad at football. Charles, Calvin, Madison. Yeah, Charles and Calvin Ashley, were hard still. Like all of them, man, there. and the whole Alexum's bad at football as well. It's just mm -hmm. the bare man in the end that are sick. Nah, Zeph, nah, Zeph was decent. I was, I, Zeph Joe was Zeph. Zeph, Zeph was I'm decent. Saying. Man like so, Muffs, Mayo, all them man, Josh, all of them man that play football and they're dope. It's different. Even mm, them. Mm. <laughs> man that kick ball, bro. So do you think then there's, there's there's a thing that where I guess there's there's been a lost opportunity of young people in the area with that opportunity of football? Or is it just that people weren't thinking, no, they're going to get scouted, man. Or, oh, it's just a fun thing. Or is I think, think that people missed out on that boat? In Peckham, yeah, for football... They, I can't even lie to you. That's a lie. Cause in Peckham, there was a lot of football going on. They used to do a thing called Mad About Football, yeah? Mm. Back in the day, for the whole summer, whole six weeks mm. holiday, all you do is kick ball every day in Burgess, isn't it? And I think scouts mm. and shit used to come. But mm. other than that, we all we had was Damon the Taylor Centre. Mm. That's it. You go there on a Wednesday, kick ball, like a little five-a-side thing in the hall. That's about mm. it. So yeah. I guess then times moved on your each in 17 18 those sort of areas had you had you ever experienced being arrested at that point have you ever been to yeah, yeah, yeah. first time i got nicked i think i was 14 for something dumb like throwing stones at feds mm. and then nicked. after that what happened what happened the second time the second time 
think I got nicked for the second time my yard got raided. Mm. I was 14, Hamro, one old school police fucking unit. It was just made for Peckham. They raided, man, and I got nicked for CS Gas. Okay. So it wasn't nothing too major at the time. It was just like. It wasn't. Little... It was just bare wild tea in it until I was 17. I got nicked mm. bare times, though. Bare weed convictions, shanks. And mm. then I got nicked for a shank one time. Uh. And I got wild tea, and then that was like the last straw. And then after that, I got nicked for what did I get nicked for for attempted robbery. Mm. And, and then was that's that... when I went to jail at seventeen. So um, was that the first time you went to jail? Yeah, that was my first time in prison. So is this whole period now? That's the time you've been in prison? No, 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 no. First time I had, I've been jailed six times. Six times. Six so times. so the first time you were seventeen uh, for the attempted robbery. How long did you get? I got eight months to four. I've done three months and then come out for a month on tag. So I'm assuming you went to Feltham at the time? Yeah, I went Feltham and then Cookhamwood. So how how was it in, in Feltham? I remember being kind of scared. Right, what's going to happen in Feltham? When I got there, like, oh, all the man in my there, cool. How was that for you guys? Nah, nah, nah. Man's thing went like that. <laughs> the mm. first time I went Feltham, them times there, yeah, that jail is full of brickies. You feel me? Mm. There's a bag of them, you get me? So it's like, when, when the man and my guy in there, we're landing there one by one, like, it's not like mm. four man I got, you get me? So I got there, and it's like, as soon as I got there, induction wing, straight away, yo, where you from? Peckham. Yo, the govs looked shook. Mm. <laughs> you get it? The govs looked at me like, yo, what, you're from Peckham? Yeah, boom. Come in this room, like, they're trying to chat to me, like, yo, what, are you PYG? I'm saying, no, I don't know nothing about no PYG. And then they're saying to me, look, mm. listen, this guy was just here, this guy, this guy was just here, and all of them have been mashed up in it. They're all my brethren. Mm. And mm. they're saying, look, this is the only wing you can go to, Falcon Wing, da 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 I'm saying, yeah, cool, say no more. And then after that, man had a couple madnesses in front of him that time still. So it was going off. But yeah, because in Pentaville, I, I go to prisons now and do sort of visits and that. And mm. one of the things that they do now is that, you know what, when someone comes in, they ask you, like, what gang are you in? Tell us. And sometimes people are like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not in nothing, but... Because someone, I talked about this the other time, and someone said, oh, it's kind of snitching, but it's not, because if you told them what gang you're in, because you are in that gang, you're safeguarding. So you tell them, nah, I'm in no gang, and then they put you in a wing full of your ops. You're fucked. Yeah, man are lying, though. Everyone, when they go to jail, as soon as mm. you hit induction wing, the first thing you're doing is finding out, yo, boom, where's my brethren? Like, mm. boom, they'll tell you. Someone will say to you, yeah, they're going to ask you, where you from? Man's from Peckham. All right, cool, you know, this man, yeah, bam. They're mm. on that wing, innit? Because... So, naturally, you're going to say to the govs, bro, I'm not going to know where but that wing, innit? Mm. You get it? Other than that, anyone that tells you otherwise is a liar, innit? You get it? No, mm. no, one, no one goes to the jail and says, yeah, boom, I want to go to the wing where my ops are because you know what's going to happen to you, innit? Mm. It's not rockets that like they're going to beat the shit out of you, innit? So, mm. man, are, man are definitely going to the jail and telling them, yo, I'm going to this wing. That's the only wing I can go to. Mm. Get me, I'm a gang member. I can't go to these other wings, innit? So you can mm. be, even if it's just to live good, even if you're not mm. shook, it's just to be with your brethren. That's what, that, mm. that's what you're going to say for me. So, uh, so at that period, was, did, did it make you think jail's long or you just f f was quite excited about it? Because it is quite exciting going to jail for the first time. Nah, when you're there. I can't lie. Feltham, when I was in Feltham that time, I was on my bed like, ah, oh, this is long. No TV, mm. bare fighting, it's long. And then when I got to Cookhamwood, it was like it changed, didn't it? I mm. went to Cookhamwood and just had it patterned straight away, mm. innit? So it was a whole different thing. And that jail, Cookhamwood was actually, you see, Felton, Felton was proper prison. Like, they don't, mm. they're not trying to rehabilitate you, they're just locking you, innit? Cookhamwood, mm. you have to go education, you have to go gym, innit? Mm. Like, there's no, like, you have to do them things. So it's better for you, innit? You, you're working, you're getting little qualifications, and you're playing football, doing gym, whatever. So that jail there, I was comfortable in there. You mm. get me? Like, I wasn't stressed or anything like that. And plus, it was only a couple months that first time, innit? So, a couple months, you've gone out. How long was you out on road for? But at that time there, I was on road for fucking 21 days. And they didn't even cut the tag off me, bro. 21 days? So, what, 21 what, what days. was it a recall or you done No, nah, I, got, I got a new charge. Uh, I got nicked for, what was that one? I think fucking aggravated burglary. Mm. I think that's what that one was. So that, that's 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 a big case. How long did you get for that? No, nah, man, bust it still. Are you busted? Okay, Aggie, cool. I got nicked for Aggie Berg and a and a burner mm. and a firearm, yeah. And then fucking my brethren went guilty for the firearm, 
and he made me bust it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. let's not say it, but you bust it. So anyway, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You you mentioned there firearms between because now all I hear is knife crime, knife crime, knife crime. You yeah, hear the yeah. odd shooting. In that era, it was all about having guns for the young people. It was, it was a danger, very dangerous time. How did you both. think about coping around that time and also your first time seeing a gun? That experience, how was that for you? The first time you ever saw something? Well, the first time I saw a gun, man was gassed, innit? So I'm mm. young, innit? And it's like, rah, it's real. There's a fight. That's an actual burner. Like, like rah, mm. let me see the shells. Let me cock it. Let me do this. You get me? Mm. And then after that, it just became casual. Cause the first time I see a burner, I was probably like 15. Mm. You get it? And then by the time I was 16, man's got man's own burners now. Like, I don't... Mm. We don't ring no one and go and get them or nothing like that. Like, they're man's, innit? Mm. So, me. so if, after that, it was casual. With that, was you sort of afraid of have, having to use it? Or was it more like, a, this? yeah, this is what we do? Because sometimes people have it and it's like, I don't really want to use it, but there's also that excitement of potentially using it. How, how was that for you at that time? It was just a thing of, yo, if man has to mm. do what man got to do, then man's going to do it, isn't it? Like, mm. you feel me? It's like, I wouldn't say man was excited and catting to do it, but it's like, if man got you, I don't mind being the guy at that point. You feel me? Mm. Mm. And at this point, was, was this most the issue still around sort of Lambeth and not really in Peckham or Ghetto? Like, I don't think at that point, I don't think no one was even beefing Ghetto in Peckham, were they? Peckham and Ghetto seemed to nah, be Nah, by that. then... By then, man's kind of linked up, in it, And that's kind of through Killer as well. Killer mm. and one youth called Tona. Them man was like this from young, you feel me? Mm. And Tona, them time there, Tona had New Cross on box. So from when mm. them man linked up, it's like everyone was just cool. The whole of Peckham, mm. the whole of them man are cool, you feel me? So, but I did grow up. When I was young, man grew up going to Lewisham the same way, like, mm. you feel me? And then afterwards, now I got beer brethren from Lewisham, like, like a lot of dogs from there, you get me? But yeah, mm. it was more around Brixton, all can't roll them times there. So in regards to at the same time, music is going on. Um, talking the hardest has popped off maybe a couple of years. Then, what are you guys trying to do now? Are you still are you going to the studio all the time? Are you making music all the time, or just like oh, just it's a hobby? I do it when I want, really. Yeah, it was more like a boredom thing. We go studio a lot, but it'd be more like. We're bored, like, yeah, come we go studio, come someone phone unit, let's go and just go chill there. Couple man will be in there bunning, couple man will be rapping, you feel me? Mm. And we'll just and be in said, there like said, four or five hours. And unit 10 was in Wolf Road. Yeah, and yeah, Wolf Road. At that point, Wolf Road is basically Peckham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them times there, Wolf Road, man's, this man's place as well, you get me? Mm. So, like, when you look, when you look at it, and obviously you're a bit older, but when you look at What's going on now in regards to what are your sort of views? I mean, you don't have to go into details and everything, but what sort of views when you see that like, raw? Like, it's actually active within the borough between two different areas that everyone was cool with, even though it's not your generation, per se. When you look at it from someone being a bit older, what you, what's your views on that? Me, I get it, innit? Like, I fully mm. understand that. Man, man was having pasta with you from Old Kent Road. That's literally down the road from Peckham. Man, man mm. was having pasta with man from Peckham. So, mm. I understand it. I know how that thing works, innit? It's just... You have to be, you have to come from that to be able to understand that. You feel me? I know why these little things happen in house, innit? It's mm. not nothing, it's not even nothing too deep. That's what's so bad. It will just be two men that have mm. a madness and everyone will. Like, so I understand it, man. I get it. Like, I don't look at it like it's a bad thing or not. It is a bad thing, because the man them shouldn't be doing what they're doing to each other, but it is what it and is. You know, you know it. it is as well. It happens. I spoke, when I, when I, I spoke to uh, YR yesterday, I spoke to Colours the other day as well. It happens every generation. One thing Colours said was that, for him personally, when there's no money involved, there's no egos. Everyone's cool. When there's no successes, everyone's cool. The whole end is cool. As soon as someone starts getting money or someone starts... There's this sort of rivalry. Do you think that plays a part as well? Like people kind of red eyes. Yeah, them man have got this. They're, no one's bringing me in. So do you think that plays a part in how in house things happen? It can be. It can be a snaky thing. Like someone might get robbed. Two man might just have a fight, bro. Mm. That might be where it is. Like there's a million reasons why them things happen, bro. It's like 
For instance, you got a little brother. If at mm. that age, yeah, a man could trouble your brother. Now mm. you and your brethren are onto my man. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And then from I, there, it's just an escalation, isn't it? And then it turns into a gang thing. You get me? But even with that, that that's that. What you just said—that was a true story. Because mm. my younger brother actually started having a passive with PYGs at, at that time because of I remember whatever, when that situ happened, man. whatever situation happened. So at that point, like even with um, Paulie, for example, Capo. I've known Capo from a very young age and him and my brother in school and I was always cool with him. So even through the, the back of that, me and him ended up in certain on that night because of that. So it's funny how things that don't involve everyone starts bringing, it starts bringing fractions and then divisions. And I always say like loyalty sometimes is blind because I've done the story of one guy yesterday from, from Brixton who same thing that where me and him had an issue because of someone else. So loyalty sometimes do you think that people are, are blindly loyal sometimes instead of actually thinking, you know what, nah, we're no wrong for that or you just have to back your bedroom no matter what? I'll be, I'll be real. In Peckham, that's the only loyal man know, isn't it? Like, there ain't no... Mm. There's not no second guessing it, innit? Once your bedroom has a madness, you're involved. There's not no chatting mm. about it or nothing like that, innit? Because that, that there is actually put into us from young, innit? I won't lie mm. to you. From young, man, I'm saying, yo, no one don't run... If man get a cracking mate, sure involved. That's what PYG was known for them time. Like mm. everyone that we had pass over would call us cowards. Like, oh, you don't, don't do one on ones and the, I'm become man ain't on that. You feel mm. me? Because it's the same thing in jail. Man, man fully is not on that. That's dead. You get mm, it? No, so, for real, for real. Every, everyone's got that's just how that's our unity. That was our strength, innit, fam? If one mm. fight, we all fight, innit? Mm. So me? you're you're back in jail again. So, so each each jail sentence, how long were the jail sentences? My first one, like I said, eight months before. The second time I done seven months on remand. The third time I done like four months on remand. That was what was that for? That was for a next Aggie Berg as well. And then I bust mm. that one. And then the fourth time was for a next Aggie Berg. A man got it dropped to a fucking. Sixteen years. Yo, oh, it's cutting out a bit there. Can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah. So it cut it for a bit. So, um, what's your mum say at this time? Because that like, you're the youngest of the family. What are your sister say? Like, wh what's going on in your life? You're, you're back and forth in and out of jail. What What are your family saying at the time? Yeah, them times there. Ah. Uh... You know what it is? I'm so young, I'm not even taking in what it's doing to my mum. Mm. You feel me? Like, I'm so young, all I can think about is I need to get back out, get active, go back to mm. And then when I go back to jail, it's like, by then, I'm used to it. I go back to jail, mm. I see the same faces, I know what wing I've got to go to, I know how to live comfortably, like, do you get me? And it's like, mm. I weren't really taking in what it was doing to my mum. It's not till I got this big sentence. Mm that I realised, like, yo, this is actually fucking up my family. Mm. How, how, old, how, how old was you when you got this big sentence? How long was the sentence for? Uh, I just turned 20. I got, I just... You might... Yo, this reception is mad. Wait, you might have to uh, repeat that because I cut out again, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I said I just turned 20 and I got 16 years. 16, I had to do eight years straight. Yeah. So how, so that's exactly the time I went to jail. Yeah. In terms of, I was 20 years old and I came out when I'm 28. So I'm assuming you're 28 now, right? Yeah, I'm 28. So that's exactly, I came out five years ago. 20s are the time where we make our lives per se. Is that when you're meant to build up and in your 30s, you've got everything sorted. Do you kind of feel that? That was the, I mean, there's always a bad time to go to jail, but you think that, that sort of like ruins some of your chances and like your life ain't over, you've got so much things potential, but you think that that limits your chances in regards to being a man because that's when we develop to be from childhood to manhood. Because at 20, we're still pretty young, but then you go through life stages and then you turn into a man. Do you think that that sort of deterred your chances a little bit in that, in that regard? 
Yeah, of course, man. That took away bare opportunities, man. I've done my whole 20s, basically, in jail. You get me? Mm. So, but also, I believe everything happens for a reason, isn't it? Like, if I didn't mm. go to jail then, I might have killed someone or been killed, you feel me? Mm. Or, like, something, I don't know. Mm. But I feel like it, it, it saved man for something better, you feel me? But now man's home, like, I'm around the right sort of people. I'm at a point now where I can just get on with things, you feel me? Mm. And that's at, at six, in sixteen years to do eight. What what was it? What was the actual sentence? Did you go guilty or not guilty? Did you get found guilty? Yeah, I went guilty. I had the uh, three firearm charges. Yeah, uh, one thing, two hand things and an assault rifle. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Then we got two food charges, uh, conspiracy to supply for crack and heroin, and then the same thing for a box of weed. So even with pleading guilty, you still got sixteen years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the judge, we had some dickhead judge in it. Cause we had one mm. judge. How the police was taking along with their evidence. Yeah, the judge is mm. saying, "Yo, no matter what, at what point we put in our guilty plea, they're gonna fucking take off the third, in it." Yeah. Mm. But then when we went now and they went for our plea, we had a different judge in it. Mm. This judge is saying, listen, the other judge is not my boss, isn't it? You know, I'm not getting no third off. You're getting 10%. I don't care what the police was doing, innit? So wow. he took off 10%. He gave, he get me, and gave me 16 years, my other Cody 16, my other one 19, and the other one 9. And yo, and when you, when you received that sentence, was you like, <sighs> last done kind of? Nah, you see me, I never once in jail said to myself, yo, my life's over, like, I was on a thing like, yo, I don't care, this place, I'm going to ride it out, and then once it's over, I'm going back to being me, I don't care, like, mm. I know, I know what I'm capable of, and I know what man does, innit, mm. you feel me, so this now, I just looked at it like it's a pause button, and at the same time, I couldn't really let it affect me, because my cold D just got, he got 19 years, innit? Mm. And the judge turned around and said to him, yo, your first year don't count in jail as well, you feel me? Your Ramon time doesn't count, you feel me? Wow. So, and... Who's that, who's that Slumps? Yeah, that's my brother Slumps, you get me? So, mm. like, me and Slumps, everyone that knows me will know me and Slumps are like twins, but Slumps is two years younger than me, so he's like my little brother, you feel me? So mm. it's like, man can't mm. be moving like a bitch and I'm in a cell with my little brother and he's got longer than me, you feel me? So man just had to hug it for both of us, like, brother, mm. this is light. Like we're gonna ride this out when we go home. It's back to business, bro. Mm. So, yo, like I said, we're, we're similar in the sense that we both went to jail at twenty, both come out at twenty-eight. What is the vision for you? And I'm gonna speak to you from a place of, I guess, experience. It's hard. There's that, there's that struggle of coming out and you see your friends are doing next thing and this person's doing that thing and. You've got put, have to put you in a hostel and things like that. From a personal experience, the road life, you don't even need to get involved in it no more. Because I've, I've done everything I've done within five years. Ago, and I got out, well, it's six years now. I got out in 2015. So we got that mm. parallel of coming out at 28. And as, as I show, my life wasn't over. Yeah, you yeah, have got that opportunity now at 28. And your music... Obviously, you've not released anything, but your music was circulating on socials because of the freestyles. Yeah. You got every opportunity to come and get involved in the game. You're seeing, I mean, when you when you from jail, when you're looking at the game and you're looking at the music and looking at what's going on with people over there, how's that made you feel? Has it made you feel excited? Like, well, when I get out, I'm gonna try and jump on this thing, and this is the avenue for me. Or have you got other plans as well? No, nah, music right now is my main focus. That's all man's focused on right now, car. When I was in jail. I didn't really take it serious. It was more like a pastime, mm. and then I put out the owner challenge freestyle, and it's like people just went mad, and they was hitting me like, "Yo, mm. bro, you're cold, you're cold. Make sure you do this rap thing when you come out." Then it's like every other freestyle I put after that, they was loving it. You get me? So then I started saying, "Yo, when I and plus, I'm in there watching. Man's getting USBs full of music videos, bro, and mm. watching everyone's videos. And man's watching man that man actually know." They're doing things. You feel me? Mm. The man saying, yo, man can do this. If them man can do it, mm. man definitely can do this. You feel me? Mm. So it was exciting me, bro. I was getting gassed. Like, yo, when I get out. And plus, when I come out now, man's around a 30 team. Like, the road don't come come to man's heads. You get it? Because mm. 
because everyone around me is here for man like yo they they, they do it out of love innit fam it's not no no mm. And it's very important the people you hang you choose to hang around with as well when you get out. Because hanging around with the same they say one of the things say you can't heal from the place that got you sick. So you can't even hang around with the same people. So I mean people are your friends and you love them. But as you get older, you have to realise, you know what? We're not in our teens now. I can't just come and hang around with you. We're actually adults. So the team that you have around you has to be very important. Also you have to make sure that you you know this anyway, that no one's keeping up with any badness around you because like you said. Because of loyalty, someone keeps up with something, you're kind of forced to go and do something to back someone that you had not, no issue with. You understand? So, is that point now where with your team, I see that you're about to release the first music video. Yeah. I need you, I need you to really go out there and push and try to win this for, for, for Peckham as well. Because obviously we've seen so many greats have gone and represent our borough. But I need you now because you got something that where the streets are looking at for you now. The streets are saying, right, you know what? He's, 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 the, he's the next one that's really coming with that authentic sound. So what now do you see, where do you see you envision yourself in the next couple of years per se? And what message would you have, I guess, to the young people who were at your age, 14, 15, and guessed? Well, me personally, money ain't stopping to at the top. Mm. You get it until you hear bread set up to records, that's at the top. Like, that's when we're gonna slightly take our foot off the gas. You get it? Mm. But until that, man, full speed until we're there, innit, fam? And as for the youth, them now, it's like, you know, what it is. I'm a man, yeah. I can't really do the youth speeches and that because I believe everyone has to learn through their own experience. Do you understand? Because, same mm. way, when I was young, everyone said to me, like, Everyone, everyone would say to you as a youth, yo, you're either going to end up dead or in jail. Do you understand? But mm. it weren't until I got 16 years that I said, yo, this thing's for real. Mm. You feel me? So And even even um, sort of... So it's cutting out. Yeah, yeah. go continue. Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Oh, it's cutting out again. Can you guys hear him? Oh, it's just slowly. Let's wait for it. Oh, it must be it must be me then. It must be on my side. Oh, you guys can't see him. Okay, hang on. Oh, yeah. Right, I think you're back now. Can you hear me? All right, what I'm gonna, right, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it. Oh wait, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, now yeah, yeah, you're back, you're back, you're back, you're back. All right, cool. Yeah. So you're saying? Yeah, like. Oh, the research has been mad. Yourself, man. Hmm. Get it. Like, there, there's not a lot you can do, man. I can't really say a lot to them, man. You just have to learn. Like, you're gonna go through some shit, and that's when you're gonna know. Yeah, this road thing is long, bro. You get it, fam. You're gonna go. So, to in regards to, in regards to music, yeah. I, I, have you got verses upon verses upon verses that you've written down from jail, or are you writing new ones now? Like, you must have like a whole folder. Yeah, both, bro. I've got hella, hella bars. That are just waiting to be released. Plus, man's been writing bare new shit. Like today, mm. today the video that man's putting out today is just a reminder. Like, yo, boom, I can spit. Do you feel me? Mm. This is just for my fans. Everyone that's been supporting man from 017 when I was putting out freestyles in jail. Mm. Like, to show them, yo, boom, man, serious. I'm here and I'm really gonna rap. You're gonna see in it. Do you mm. feel me? Like, so today, 7 p.m. That one's coming out on my own channel and we're starting. So that's just a freestyle. Yeah, this one's just a freestyle, literally, like, literally, like how I used to do it in jail. The man them said, just remind them, you feel me? Remind them that this is what you do, bro. 
Mm. You feel me? So we just we just got busy with it straight away. So with that, I, I, I mean, you've been you must be in the studio. Have you, how, many, how many songs have you recorded already? Oh, the reception's moving mad. Yeah. Yeah, like, we probably put down at least... Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. At least 20, 25 songs man's got down already. And that don't include no freestyles. Mm. You get it, like, mm. man's been working. And plus, I'm on some mad restrictions. Yeah, that, that's what I'm going to say as well, in terms of, uh, did I put you on a map of three? No, not on a map of three. I'm on map of two still. Okay, that's that's even that's bad as well. To be fair, so th for those that don't understand map, or map is basically once you've been released from jail, the probation service might still see you as a danger, so they put you on different levels as well. So map of three is the highest level, map of two is sort of intermediate. Who in the in the game? Right now, was you sort of fucking with in jail, thinking that, right, you know what, I feel my man. Someone from someone from a different area, someone from, from the area, and also, who would you like to work with? Uh, I've been with a couple man, though, in jail, man. I've been in jail with bear man, most man. Fucking, uh, my nigga RV. Mm. Uh, me and RV was close in jail still, that's my brethren still. Uh, I can't even think off the top of my head, fam. But definitely, there's going to be a lot of people that I work with. Like, even man that I wasn't in jail with, like, there's rappers that I think are dope and they've actually hit man, like, yo, blood, you can rap as well. You feel me? Like, let me mm. think. That Mowgli, Mowgli from Brom, he's dope, bro. My man, mm. I've been following my man since he's called fucking the, the whole of Zone 2. Them lot are dope. There's bare man that rap that are called CF size. Mm. Then, like, there's a lot of people that man's due to fuck with in the future, you feel me? And mm. I don't know, man, but I've been in jail. So, in, 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 in regards to zone two, it, yeah, so in, in regards to zone two, was it sort of the you, you, it's like you kind of knew already coming up underneath you guys? Nah, I only know out of zone two, yeah, I probably that I can say to you, yeah, I know, I've seen them, I've spoken to them, it's probably like. Two, three of them, innit? I remember them man, they're all mm. younger than me, innit? Mm. Do you feel me? So, there's probably like two, three of them, but most of them will probably know who I am or they might have seen me before, innit? Mm. Do you get it, from? But all of them, from, you're from the ends, you're from the ends, innit, man? It's love already, you get me? I hear that. So, you're saying you tonight, 7pm, we're all tuning in. What's the, what's the YouTube channel? What's the YouTube channel? What's the, what's the YouTube channel C. so people uh, know how to get there? Cinco C. The Cinco C. It's tonight. Yeah, so what's... what's my bio, man. Mm. Okay, so we look forward to it. And I know so the reception was a, bit, was a bit mad, but I enjoy that interview. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's someone Bobby, that who I, I didn't really interact with, but like I said, you knew my younger brother and I seen some of the freestyles and I've been seeing that raw. So I hit you up and say, raw, you know what? You, you've just come out. Let me try and give you whatever platform I can give you. Just no, sort I of a, it. I a, it. A, a, a boost that so people can say, you know what, raw, take take my man in. And like I said, we've got similar parallels in regards to both going to jail at 20, both coming out at 28. So let me be a testament to what you can go and go out and achieve. Being coming out at 28, by no means, it's a, it's, a, it's an end for you. Now, you're sort of restarting life again. Go out there and win, man. Go out there and win. Yeah, 100%. 100%, man. I appreciate the love and the support. Seriously, bro. No, yeah. I appreciate it, man. Any, any last words for your fans out there? Stick with the bread. Any last words for your bread fans? Set, up to records. We're on our way, innit? 2021, yeah, is man's year, innit? You get me? You like, just keep faith in me, man. All right, say no more, bro. Go, man. Hey, love, my brother. Love, love. Right. Yeah, guys, you can catch that on YouTube later on today. Thanks for tuning in, man. Peace.